Thank you all for coming out. What a privilege it is to be here tonight on this rainy night. And man, I love to hear the rain. I tell you what, it's exciting to look around here tonight at all the people who have come out. And I tell you what, as we've had a great day today, visiting with Angus and Alan and the team, I got to thinking about my journey, <clears throat> what's taking place in my life over the last three years. And I tell you what, it was three years ago, on September the 14th, in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, at World Outreach Church, that I had an opportunity to hear this man for the very first time. Before I went, I'd been praying that the God would allow the Holy Spirit to work in me like I'd never experienced before in my life. And I'd never prayed anything like that before. But you know what? On the 15th of September, the Holy Spirit met me in a powerful way. And my life and my family have never been the same since. And I tell you what, it's such a privilege to be standing here tonight looking out over all of y'all. And I'm just praying that each and every one of y'all have come expecting to receive something from the Holy Spirit tonight. You know, the last three years, the last three years have been an incredible ride in some of our lives. We've made mistakes, but God has been so good and so gracious to allow us to continue on. And I'm thankful for that. But guys, as we begin to go on through the day, I just cannot begin to tell you what I experienced three years ago. You see that night, whenever I got at that church, the first time in my life that an altar call was made and I went forward. I'd made those commitments in my heart before, but I'd never taken that step and stepped out. But that night when I made that step and I stepped out, something changed inside of me. And I tell you what, that night as we sat there eating dinner that night, I told Daryl that night, I said, guys, I'm going home. It's an eight-hour drive to Murfreesboro to Rudy, Arkansas. And they said, man, wait till in the morning. And I said, I'm not waiting. Because when my wife and my girls wake up in the morning, I want them to know what I experienced last night. And I got in that truck, and I began to drive that eight hours home by myself. And I tell people when I share my testimony that that night when I stopped in West Memphis, Arkansas, and filled up with fuel, and I got in, and I turned the radio off, and I was praying on the way home. I don't know what the mileage marker was, but I wish I did. But I tell you what, the Holy Spirit came in my truck and wore me out about things in my life and things in my home that I had allowed to be there. And I turned my eye to it. But when I came home, I told my wife, I said, no more. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord and we'll be proud of it. So guys, I just thank y'all for giving me an opportunity to stand in front of y'all and share a little bit. Guys, it's been an incredible three years. And I tell you what, I wouldn't go back the other way for anything, Daryl. No way. Thank y'all so much. Y'all have a blessing in store for y'all. And I pray that each and every one of y'all are sitting here expecting to get something. Thank y'all. I can testify on the behalf of my brother-in-law, Steve, that just spoke. I've known this man for over 25 years. It's a 180 degree difference in his life, what's happened since the Lord came into our life. And I'm telling you what, people, my story when I went to see Angus, when I went out to Tennessee three years ago, the same, just four, group, four guys, we drove out there together, 
because I was looking for, for reality in my heart because my life was a wreck. But every week I was in church. Every week I sat there in my chair and I brought my kids and I was faithful. But I was so discouraged and thought every word ever spoken over me, every promise ever given of God was, was dead and over and thought I'd missed it. But God heard the cry of my heart. God heard the cry of my heart. At times the only good I could find in my heart was that way down in there was a little boy crying out to want to please his father. And God answered that prayer. We're not lifting up Angus Buckin, but he serves a mighty God. And he's experienced God in ways that we need to see in our country. Some of you have come here tonight expecting. Some of you have come, don't even know why you're here. But I'm telling you what, people. God has chosen once again to visit this country. For 20 years, I asked God to send me in, off to missions because I thought he'd turned his back on America. But God said, no, you stay here and you light a torch for me here. And I'm telling you what, people. God is bringing a torch here tonight. When people said, when people asked me, how many are you expecting? I said, we've cast a big net. God brought the water and he brought the fish. What I'm telling you what, people, there have been many visions over this arena of this place packed and outside packed. And I felt like a while back that was for the future. Understand and hear me tonight. You're going to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ presented to you in a way you've never heard before. And it's going to be real. And if you will let God, he will ignite a, a fire in your heart. You won't have to worry about covering it with a bushel basket because it'll burn it up. The fire that God lit in my heart has continued to burn. Us guys that went have been on our knees for three years. We get up early every morning. Before I tried and tried and tried. Since that day, God gets me out of bed and on my knees. And he's transformed my life, my family's life, business, and everywhere. And we begin to pray that God would bring this here to our area. That is, this is the beginning of what this is all about. So people, be expecting. Open your hearts. This is real. The real gospel of Jesus Christ. I think these guys from, from World Outreach Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, for bringing Angus to America, for encouraging him to come here, that we needed what he had to say. I'm going to... Uh, hand the mic over to Pastor, Pastor Alan Jackson. He is the pastor of World Outreach Church in Murfreesboro. He will introduce Angus and start this evening. I give him the liberty. Amen. Thank you, Daryl. Well, hello, Fort Smith. Is this like the holy section down here? Whoa. That's the end of my tether right there. All right. What an honor to be here tonight. I am a pastor in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Fort Smith's bigger than Murfreesboro, so I've come to a big town tonight. And it is an honor to be here. I believe we're here on a God appointment. Uh, I'm not in the Christian entertainment business. If I was, my life would look different than it does. Amen. God, let your spirit fall on us like rain tonight. Hallelujah. I grew up in a barn. I like to hear rain on a tin roof. I want to introduce some men that came with us. Uh, my brother is here, Philip. He serves in the congregation with me. And George Carpenter and Tommy Vogat traveled with Angus. You three stand up. These guys traveled a long way to be in Fort Smith tonight. Angus has some spiritual sons with him. I'll let him introduce those to you in just a minute. But we came on purpose. Uh, we're not here by accident. There was a truck full of guys that drove from Fort Smith to Murfreesboro a few years ago. And God did something in their heart. And they have, uh, they have paid careful attention to the sparks that God ignited in them that night. 
and they have kept them alive. It's not an accident when there's spiritual momentum in you. If you will treat the Lord with respect, he will respond to you. If you treat him with disinterest and you treat him casually, he won't pay much attention. That's the truth. May I just act like your pastor for a minute? I'm leaving town tomorrow, so I can get in your business and step on all ten toes and then leave. But I'll pray for you. You know, we had invitations in New York and on the West Coast, but we chose to come here. We're in Joplin tomorrow night because I wanted to st we wanted to come to the heart of America and ask God to ignite a spark that would become a, a roaring fire across the heartland of America. It's the truth. We're doing an event in Nashville Sunday night at Bridgestone Arena. It's the arena where they did the CMA Awards last night. They celebrated some things in there last night, but we're going in there Sunday night and celebrate the Lord. But the event is called Give Thanks. And we've done it on purpose. This is the beginning of the Thanksgiving Christmas season in our nation. For the next 60 days, on one level or another, we're focused on holidays. Gluttony and shopping. That's the truth. But it seemed to us that it was most important that we start this holiday season by giving thanks to God. You know, we are a nation that is uniquely blessed. In all the world, there's no place like America. Uh, and I don't just mean the abundance that we have. We're a nation that was founded by men and women with the intent that this be a place where you had the freedom to worship Jesus of Nazareth. There's no nation in history that has an origin like ours. And God has uniquely blessed us. Doesn't mean we're better than anyone else. Doesn't mean God doesn't love the other nations. But we have a unique heritage. The reason we're a nation of tolerance and a nation of diversity is because of that Christian heritage. And God has blessed us. We took Angus and the team to um, a Bass Pro Shop the other night. We were in Dallas. How do you explain a Bass Pro Shop to somebody that hasn't been to the States? So we walked in and we started wandering around. And their eyes were big. I stopped in front of a rack that had jerky on it. And they said, is this beef jerky? And I said, yes. And there was teriyaki jerky and pepper jerky. There were 25 different kinds of jerky. We're blessed, folks. We have the best education, the best health care. We have more food, better housing, more transportation, more opportunities than any people in history. And we think somehow we've caused it. And I've come with a simple message. I'm going to introduce Angus in just a second. But when we're gone tomorrow, I don't want, I, we're not here to entertain you. We're here to ask God to ignite a spark in you. And if you wake up tomorrow and you say, what is it I'm supposed to do today now that they've rolled out of here? I want to encourage you tomorrow to give thanks to God. Every day from now until the end of this year to on purpose, intentionally begin your day by saying, God, thank you. You blessed me. You've been good to me. I don't mean my life's perfect. It doesn't mean everything is just the way you want it. But God has blessed us. I was in your Walmart today. That is a blessing place. I like cookies. I don't care what kind. And I love, I, you walk down the aisle, there is 60 different kinds of cookies. If you like Oreos, there's 20 different kinds of Oreos. They got holiday and double stuff and fudge covered. It's an anointed aisle. That's the truth. I've lived places in the world where there were no grocery stores. And we think everybody in the world has what we do. So I want to ask you tonight, if you will make the commitment with me for 60 days to start every day saying, God, thank you. Men, you get your wife or your kids around you say, Lord, I thank you for my wife today. Thank you that you would bless me with such a wife. And then just hush, say amen in Jesus' name. Quit while you're ahead. You don't have to be eloquent. All right? But before I introduce Angus, I want you to stand with me. I'm going to lift my hand. You know, th this doesn't make you holy. You can be filled with wickedness and raise your hands in church. But this means the same thing all over the world. This means I surrender. All right, Romans 12, 1 says to offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God. God, I surrender to you. 
for all the blessings we have. We're one of the most ungrateful people in the world. You know what the opposite of being thankful is? It's not being ungrateful. Ungrateful is just a passive expression of rebellion. The opposite of being thankful is being entitled. Rather than being grateful, you think you deserve it. And sadly, we're one of the most entitled people in the world. I don't want to rage against the darkness. I want to turn up the light. Folks, the president's not our problem. The Congress is not our problem. It's not the politicians or the economy or Putin or somebody else. The person in the mirror is the only person we've got influence over. And we're here tonight. God divinely orchestrated this group of people in this place to say, God, we're going to say thank you. You brought us here. You have no idea how important you are. There's enough people here to change the heart of this nation. That's the truth. Now, I'm going to take a 30 seconds and offer a prayer of thanksgiving. And I want you to join me. If you've got something you can say thankful for, you tell the Lord. And then I'm going to close and I'll introduce Angus. Lord, we come tonight to say thank you. Thank you for a place we have the freedom to gather in Jesus' name. Thank you for the freedom that we can say Jesus is Lord at the top of our lungs in a public place without fear of reprisal or recrimination. You have blessed us and we come tonight to acknowledge you almighty God and your goodness and your grace and your mercy to us. I thank you for the men and women in this community whose hearts you've touched, who've invested the time and energy and effort to make this evening possible. Lord, we bless you. You have poured out your blessings on us as a nation. We have food and clothing and shelter and schools for our children, medicine to give them. Lord, they have hope of a future, and it's come from you. We praise you for it. Through Jesus, you have forgiven our sins. You have justified us, sanctified us, made us holy. In Jesus' name, Lord, we can't do it for ourselves. You have done it. We lift our hands and our voices in praise and thanksgiving to you. Forgive us, Father, for our ingratitude. Forgive us for our willingness to gobble up your blessings and demand more like spoiled children. Forgive us, Father, for taking for granted your grace and your mercy to us. You have protected us and watched over us. Lord, I pray that you will ignite in the hearts of men and women across this nation, from coast to coast and border to border, a spirit of thanksgiving. Let the fear of God come on us again. We praise you for it, Lord. You brought us into being. You have blessed us. And we stand tonight with our hands lifted to you and our hearts and our voices lifted to you to say thank you for your blessings upon us. Thank you for what you've given us. Thank you for what you've done on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven. And if you and I will open our hearts to him, we will see him change the direction of our nation. Well, that's the truth. Is that for Angus? All right. You can have a seat. I was in South Africa a few years ago. I was asked to go there to speak actually on behalf of a friend of mine who's, who's plain. He, he couldn't make the connection, so I was there filling in. They weren't glad to see me. And I was in three different cities, and every time I went to a new city, they drove me past this beautiful new stadium. The, the World Cup soccer had just left South Africa. And they'd point at the stadium, and they said, this is the stadium in Cape Town, and they said, Angus filled that. Like I was supposed to know what that meant. Then I went to Durban and we drove past the stadium and they said, Angus filled that. Well, I'm a preacher. By now I'm curious. I said, what's an Angus? I grew up in Tennessee. My father's a veterinarian and Angus is a black cow. And I thought, if they got a cow that's good enough to keep filling these stadiums, I want one in Tennessee. And they told me who he was and they told me his story. So I went home and found Faith Like Potatoes and saw the movie and read the book and the next year I was in Jerusalem for an event and Angus was, a, Angus was speaking at the same event. And we had a cup of tea together. And I'll never forget the day he walked out on that stage in Jerusalem. Jerusalem's a hard place to talk about Jesus. And he had his hat and his boots on 
and he talked about his quiet times with Jesus every day. And I was so touched by his love for the Lord and the, the, the sense of the Spirit of God in his life that when we got back home, we invited him to come to Tennessee. And in, in a unique way, God has joined our hearts. But I've heard lots of preachers in my lifetime. But I've never known anybody that when they're gone, the impact in the lives of people is what it is when I've seen Angus minister. And if you'll open your heart tonight, God has something for you. Not because of Angus, and certainly not because of Alan, but because you're important to a living God. All right, don't ever confuse the two. God loves you. People are just delivery systems. But Angus Buckin is one of the most remarkable men I've ever known. Uh, I visited his farm in Graytown, and he is what he tells you he is. He's a farmer. He lives at the end of the dirt road. But it's, it's my honor to introduce to you tonight one of the most remarkable men of God I've ever known, and I'm very privileged to say my friend, Angus Buckin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. We're going to have to work on that one. A very good evening to you. I want you to say to the person sitting next to you tonight, I'm expecting something from Jesus. Say to that person, even whether you believe it or not, say it. Tonight I'm expecting something from Jesus. We just thank God for, for the boys, the, the, the four or five men. I tell you what, you, you touched my heart tonight and your singing is out of this world. Can you give them a big clap, please? Daryl, Steve, the boys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are going through the worst drought in living memory in South Africa at the moment. My wife phoned me today. Durban has got about three, three million people. They've got two months water left and then it's no more, no, no, no more water to drink. And I'm hearing this rain coming down. I love rain. I'm a farmer. I want to tell you, I'm not disappointed at all. I believe what's happened here tonight, Daryl, Steve, is that God has used this rain to bring the right people to this meeting. I really believe that with my heart. The Lord can change the world with 12 men. There's more than 12 men and women in this place tonight. And I'm believing that this is the heart of uh, the United States of America. And what better place to start the fire than right here. Amen! Now listen, listen gentlemen, we just got to get something straight and then we're going to get down to it. When you say amen, you must mean it. Because, we, because we're in revival. We don't want this amen, brother. That, the devil pays no attention to that. You see, where I come from, I come from Zululand. And the Zulus are the most aggressive nation in Africa. There's 8 million Zulus. Whatever they do, they do it with all their heart. And when they come to Jesus, they come to Jesus with all their heart. So when they say amen, they say amen from here. And they say, Amen! See? And then the devil runs backwards. See? And you say, Amen. He doesn't pay any attention. Now, come on, I want the men to help me here. Because we're going to say it a few times tonight. And hopefully he's going to get to the White House. How are you talking? One, two, three. Amen. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Amen. That's better. Let's pray. Father, we've laughed tonight and we've cried as well tonight and Lord we've heard the rain fall on this building we know Lord there's been rodeos in this place and there'll be many more but I pray tonight Holy Spirit as I hear that thunder and that rain that you will move by your spirit tonight that'll make a rodeo look like a tame event in comparison Holy Spirit visit us tonight we are desperate for you Lord we are appealing to you Lord save this nation Save this nation, Lord, so that you can save the world. And I pray that you'd watch over the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, for we ask it in Jesus' name. 
And all God's people said, Amen! 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 I want you to start getting a bit aggressive. That devil is moving out tonight. Moving out. He's leaving here. I've got two men here. There's a man who come all the way from Ireland, Northern Ireland, from Belfast. There's another man who come all the way from England to be here tonight. Stand up, boys. Give him a huge clap. Huge clap. Thank you. Amen. And they are committed to seeing revival in the British Isles. They are sick and tired of the devil taking their people to the cleaners. All roads do not lead to heaven. John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Now you see some people say that's hate speech. That's not hate speech, madam. That's what Jesus says. Tonight we are not going to be politically correct. Because I can't spell the word political. We're going to be spiritually correct. Amen. 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 Jesus is calling his people tonight. I've got one scripture verse and I want to read it to you. I know it off by heart, but I'm going to read it to you. God is speaking about ambassadors. Say to the person sitting next to you, I am an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And tonight, I'm signing up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled with God. My dear friend, tonight God is going to plead through you for the people of this beautiful nation. This is the most beautiful nation I've ever seen. But I can see what's happening. It's sliding. It's sliding. It's got to stop tonight. It's sliding. Slowly but surely, but it's picking up momentum. Who's going to stop it? If you don't stop it, who is going to stop it? Tonight we need to stand up and say, this far devil, no further. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap, please. Please. Thank you, Lord. An ambassador is a permanent representative in a foreign country. That's what an ambassador is. He's a permanent representative in a foreign country. This is not my home. My home is heaven. I'm just passing through. I'm a sojourner in a foreign land. But I tell you what, I need to know in whom I believe and in what I believe. Some of us here tonight, you don't even know what you believe in. And that's why the devil is making hell out of your life. You've got to get back to basics. You've got to know who you are in Christ. See, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Tonight is our night. So before we leave this place tonight, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Just like Daryl said, just like Steve said, an opportunity to say to the devil, this far, no further. We're going to say this far to depression. No more depression from tonight. We're going to talk about divine healing tonight. You don't believe in divine healing? You are not an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I don't care who you are, sir. You can be the Archbishop of Canterbury. You can be the Pope. I don't care who you are. Jesus said, lay your hands upon the sick, pray the prayer of faith, and God will raise him up. Come on. That's what the Bible says. Oh yes, but brother, no buts. No more buts tonight. Tonight is the end of buts. Jesus said it. I believe it. And that settles it. That's what Smith Wigglesworth said. And he was an Englishman. I want to ask you tonight, how is it in your home? How is it in your own life? Jesus is calling for ambassadors in the United States of America. What is our credential? Our credential is the Bible. That's our credentials. The Bible. Do you know your credentials? You see, if your ambassador comes to South Africa, he has to come to our president 
and present his credentials. He needs to know what America stands for. Do you know what Jesus Christ stands for? You see, that's the question. You say to me, Angus, I've been a believer for 25 years. I want to ask you a question, sir. When was the last time you spoke to somebody about Jesus? See, we're talking about revival. What's going to change this nation is revival. You know why young people are into drugs and alcohol and pornography? You know why? Because they, there's no ambassadors telling them about the good life, about eternal life, about freedom. See? So, so, so it's not what you say, auntie. It's who you are that's going to change people's lives. It's not what you say. It's who you are. Now, if there's nobody coming to see you, you've got a problem. You are a useless ambassador. See? See? See, what, what, what should be happening after tonight? People are going to come to you and they're going to ask you, what, why are you different? See? See, the ambassadors from Jesus Christ, they are displaying peace, joy. They're displaying patience, understanding, loving kindness. Ambassadors of Jesus Christ have got a mission. They've got a vision. They get up in the morning and they get running. Not because they want to look good, but because they want to be strong for the gospel. This job requires discipline. Come on, give the Lord a clap. Discipline. Discipline. You go to the army, sir, and you'll see what discipline is. I've never been in the army in my life. But I'm in God's army. And I've got to watch what I say. And I've got to watch what I do. I don't go anywhere on my own. I've got men that go with me. Why? Because I'm not giving the devil a chance to get in. You see? I pay my income tax. Why? Because God said so. Not because the government said so. Because God said so. So when I take this word and I say, Jesus! He says, yes, son. And I can give you testimony. My Lord is more real to me, sir, than you sitting in that chair. This book is Jesus Christ in print. Can we give the Lord a clap? This book is Jesus Christ in print. If you look at the King James Version or the New King James, it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the... The Father, the... Doesn't say that. It says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So who is the Word? Jesus! Now you see, folks, I'm going to be real with you because I've come a long way to speak to you and we're leaving early tomorrow morning. We're going somewhere else. I don't know where we're going, but we're going. I don't feel like going. I'm very at home here, but I will go, sir. Some of you are not even reading your Bibles. You say, Angus, how do you know? Because the Holy Spirit's telling me as I'm talking to you. This book is a friend to me that sticks closer than any brother. This book has got the power to change this world. This book, this book, even the Muslims acknowledge this book. I went to visit some Muslims once to tell them about Jesus. I walked into the man's house. I put my Bible on the carpet. He said to me, a Muslim, he said to me, sir, don't put that book on the carpet. Put it on the coffee table. A Muslim. This book needs more respect. Stop arguing about the book and start believing the book. Come on. This country was founded on this book. You're the only nation that I know of in the whole world that's got in God do we trust on your money. I don't know another country. And I'm telling you, sir, listen to me, young boy. If you don't wake up and start speaking up, they're going to take that off, that money. I'm telling you. You cannot tell me that you can only believe parts of this book. There are ministers in our country that don't even believe that this is the word of God. They say it's a guideline. This book from Genesis to Revelation is absolute truth. Come on, let's give a lot of clap back. Come on. This book. This book. This book has got power. This book gives you direction. 
This book gives you, I call it my agricultural manual. This book tells me when to buy cattle, when to sell cattle. This book tells me when to plant corn. This book tells me a fair day's wage for a fair day's work. This book tells me to love my wife. Did you hear that, boy? This book, madam, tells me that you must submit to your husband. Uncle Angus, we don't like that. I don't care what you like, my girl. I'm telling you what Jesus likes. He said, you submit. And the more you submit to him, the more he'll love you. And the more he loves you, the more you'll submit to him. You see, God did it the right way around. Amen. Amen. This book says, don't antagonize your children. This book says, a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. If a man works hard, pay him. If he doesn't work hard, fire him. Amen. It's getting a bit quiet in here. This is the radio. This is the bull ring. That's why we're here. This is the finest place I think I've ever preached in. I only ever rode a bull once. And that was in Australia. And that was to try and um, meet a young girl. It was about a hundred years ago. I paid my twelve rent, my twelve dollars. I got on the bull. I lost it for two seconds. I saw the sky. I saw the dirt. I saw the sky, and then I landed in the dirt. And that was it. I want to tell you something tonight. Tonight. Tonight, we're not going to ride bulls. Tonight, we're going to make a decision for Jesus. Amen. And then you're going to be different. These four men came back from Murfreesboro. And look what's happened. Four men. And probably the worst storm that you've had for a while. And, they, and you're still here. That's a, that's a miracle. Give yourselves a clap. It's a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you a story that happened to me. Sir, I gave my life to the Lord on the 18th of February, 1979. The greatest day of my life. I didn't want to go to church. I only went to church when I had to. My wife had had enough of me. I was working so hard, so I was working 18 hours a day, seven days a week, because there was nothing else to do. I had four little children then. My fifth child wasn't born. I built a bottle and daub house. That's mud. Okay? The neighbors, they thought that we weren't going to last for six months. They said, these guys will be gone in six months. They're living worse than the worst. I said, I'll show them. I started farming in Zambia. I'm going to do it again in South Africa. I'll show them. See, I was a proud man. I come from a Scottish background. You give me something, I'll pay for it. If I can't pay for it, I don't want it. That was me. Stiff upper lip, cowboys don't cry. That was me. It's a lot of hogwash. It's a lot of hogwash. It's called pride. Pride always comes before a fall. Well, I couldn't sleep. I'd go to the pub. I'd drink. Try and forget my problems. Go home. I still couldn't sleep. Wake up in the morning with a head like this. And less money. And my wife said to me one day, Angus, we've got to go to church. We can't go on like this any longer. I'm telling you the story. There's people here tonight that can't sleep. I'm going to pray for you. It's called insomnia. I'm going to pray for you. Tonight you're going to sleep like a baby. You'll see. Because the opposite of fear is faith. Amen. Without Jesus, you're not going to make it. I went to that church. They made the altar call. I'm going to make one tonight too, by the way. Get ready for it. Tonight. You heard what Daryl said. You heard what Steve said. Tonight's your night. Tonight. That's why you're here. You're not here for any other reason. You're here tonight to make a stand to become an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. Amen. I went to church. I made the altar call. I came to the front. My life was transformed overnight. Sir, when you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ, things must change. See, when you came to my house, I was a very, very sociable person. You came to my house, I made sure you didn't walk out of my house on a straight line. I wouldn't offer you a glass of beer, I'd give you a quart of beer. 
And when you finish that one, there's another one waiting for you. And we're laughing, but it's not funny. See, I'm, I'm, I'm letting it all out tonight. I'm going to offend people here. It doesn't matter. I love you. They invite me to the Western Cape. That's where they produce the finest wine in Africa. I say, don't invite me there because I don't like wine. But they still invite me. You know why? Because they want the truth. When you see a little boy of four years old who idolizes his daddy, idolizes him, big strong man but every Friday night when daddy comes home he can't walk too straight and he says to his mommy mommy what's wrong with daddy and she says daddy's sick daddy's sick son and so he says to his daddy daddy don't worry you'll be alright and then one day young lady that little boy grows up a bit bigger and his daddy comes home on Christmas Eve and he can't walk in a straight line And then that young man realizes that my daddy's not sick. My daddy's drunk. And his life just starts to collapse. Don't tell me there's nothing wrong with the occasional beer. I'm telling you, sir, there's nothing good about it either. I've seen too many women come to me crying in St. Angus. I've got no money. My husband's drunk all the money. I've seen guys that come to me weeping. Tell me they wake up in the morning and their wife's lying in bed next to them. She's got a black eye. He says, who did that to you? I'll kill him. And she says, you did it last night. I'm talking about ambassadors for Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about start living what you're preaching. I want to tell you something. If people are not coming to you and asking you what makes you tick, there's something wrong. They don't want it. You see what happens? We get pious. You know what pious means, sir? Pious is I'm a believer, sir. I gave my life to Jesus. Jesus says, I didn't know you. I've never known you. Hypocrite. Some of you here are, are, are playing around with pornography and you're preaching the gospel. But when you pray for the sick, they don't get healed. When you, when you make a salvation call, no one comes forward. Why? Because God says, I'm not in that. I'm a jealous God. I don't serve two masters. You're either serving Jesus or you're serving the devil. Come on. Come on. You're going to be different. That's why we're here in this bull ring here tonight. I will never forget this night, by the way. And I've preached all over the world. This is a special time. This is revival time. Come on. This is the night we're going to be set free. Free indeed. But you see, when you become a, a, an ambassador, you become different. So what happened? I had everything in my house. I had whiskey. I had drambui. I had gin. I had vodka. I had beer. I had everything. And I had lots of friends. After three months, when I'd given my life to the Lord, I woke up one morning and I said, Jill, I don't need this stuff anymore. Hey, I love that girl, man. I'm telling you, I'm missing her. Big time. I'm waiting. I'm going home on the 11th. No makanjai. Are you speaking in tongues, Brother Angus? No, I'm speaking in Zulu. No makanjai means come what may. I'm going home. I said to Jill one morning, I said, no more. I went to the drinks cabinet. I took all the alcohol out and I poured it down the toilet. And I flashed the chain. Don't, don't clap yet. Don't clap yet. So my friends came for supper. My drinking friends, ambassador, changing. And so when they arrived, they sat down and said, how's it, Angus, big, tough farmers? I said, boys, tonight I can offer you Fanta Orange, Coca-Cola, uh, orange juice. And they looked at me just like you're looking at me now. Now, we're not laughing because I'm telling you, after tonight, there's going to be a change in your life. See? He looked at me and said, are you, are, you, are, are, you, are you serious? Are you playing with me? I said, I'm dead serious. He said, I'll have a Coke. He never came back to my house. I lost my friends overnight, folks. And then I started to make real friends. Like that man, real friends. Whether I drink or whether I don't drink, 
men that know what we stand for. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. You see, lady, I'm talking to that beautiful lady sitting up on the top. You see, lady, you are you. People don't have to like you, but they must respect you. See, see, all creation is waiting with expectation for the manifestation of the sons of God. See, people don't have to like you, but they must respect you. And I'm telling you, when the crunch is when the, when the game's on, they'll come to you for advice. I'm telling you, I've experienced it in my own life. People don't like me. It doesn't matter. You see, you see, sir, you won't believe what I'm going to tell you now. When I was a small boy, I was petrified of people. If I, if I saw a girl, I would run a mile. I couldn't speak to more than two people. What's happened? I'll tell you what's happened. God's given me a fear of God. And the fear of God has superseded the fear of man. So tonight, I'm bringing you the gospel. See, see, when God called me, He called me with the scripture. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Son of man. That's me. I've made you a witness. Son of man. When I say unto the wicked man, thou shalt surely perish, and you give him not warning to turn from his wicked ways, that wicked man will die in his sin, but his blood shall I require at your hand. See? But if you warn the wicked man to turn from his wicked ways, and he heareth not, he will die in his sin, but thou hast redeemed thy soul. I have, an ob I have a, a mandate from God. For the United States of America. This is the mandate. Angus, tell them the truth. But Lord, what happens if they don't like me? Angus, tell them the truth. Because it's the truth that will set you free. I'm a man. The truth will save this country. I don't care what the president says. What does the book say? What does the book say about divorce? The book says God hates divorce. So what happens to me, Angus? I'm divorced. Am I disqualified? No, you're not disqualified. Repent and never do it again. Simple. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. That's it. See? The Bible says, Thou shalt not steal. Well, Angus, I've been in jail. I've just met a man here now. He told me he's been in jail. He's here tonight. Him and me, we're, we're, both, we're both the same. The only difference between him and me is he got caught and I didn't get caught. It's not a joke. He served his time, and I'm asking for forgiveness. Okay? So what I'm saying is we tell the truth, and the truth sets us free. That's it. That's as simple as that. When you do that, this country will turn around, I'm telling you. You don't have much time left, by the way. There's elections coming up. And the only thing that will change this country is revival! 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 What is Revival! A people saturated with God. Huh? When, when you walk into that shop, people will see he's got his chest up, his head's up. He's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Good morning, sir. I love taking this book with me everywhere I go. When I used to be a farmer and I got into a tough spell, I had to go and see the bank manager. And I used to take this book with me. And I'd arrive there and make an appointment. I'd walk in and I'd say, good morning, Mr. Smith. He'd say, good morning. And I'd put this book on the table. He'd say, how much money do you want? It's called divine intimidation. <laughs> Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. Not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God and the salvation for those who believe. I want to I pray for you tonight, so I'm going to be short. Well, shortish. Blessed are the short winded, for they shall be invited back again. Well, I don't care if I get invited back again, I'm doing it tonight. Folks, I want to tell you I love you. I love America. I've never met a more generous people in my life. See this buckle I'm wearing? Charlie Daniels gave me that buckle. Oh, yes. Come on. He gave it to me. 
Thanks to Anna and Philip. I love American people. We've got to be different. God's asking for ambassadors tonight. An ambassador is not a man that's ashamed. He represents his country. He knows his credentials. I want to tell you what happened to me. After I got saved, my mother, oh, what a beautiful lady, just like you, auntie. A snow white hair, just like me. I was young then, I was 32 years old. I love my mother. She came from Scotland. She had the most beautiful accent. She used to drink about 50 cups of tea every day. I started making tea when I was about four years old. I'm the best tea maker in the world. I can make tea with my eyes closed. Okay? And I gave my life to the Lord. And I went to see mom. We went into the, she lived in town. We were on the farm. And she was sitting by a fireplace. It was cold. And I said, hello, mom, how are you? I'm the oldest in my family. And that old lady started to cry. I said, mother, what's wrong? She said, Angus, it's near the same anymore. It's not the same anymore. I'm saying, what's wrong, mom? And then I realized what it was. You see, Manny, I'd given my life to Jesus. I was born again. I was a new man in Christ. My mother that bore me recognized it before anybody else. And I started crying. I said, Mom, I said, you can also have Jesus as your Savior. She said, I, laddie. Mom, can't, can't, can't I pray with you? She said, I. I got on my knees next to my mother. I led my mother to Christ. It was the greatest day of my life. Just like that. Just like that. You, you, you don't have to go to theological college to lead somebody to Jesus. You just have to love them. If you're going to go and visit somebody who's just lost a loved one, they don't want scripture. They don't want doctrine. They want love. Put your arm around them and start to weep with them. I cry now more than I preach. I can't help it. My father was a different story. He stood six foot tall, six foot wide. He had a back broader than a door. He had fingers like pork sausages. He came from Scotland. He was, a, he, he, he was a blacksmith. When I was in the gym, when this used to be up here, and I was pumping iron, I said, Dad, I'm in the gym. He said, Laddie, I'm in the gym 18 hours a day. 18 hours a day he was pumping iron. Strongest man I ever met. His favorite saying used to be, Angus, the man's never born yet and I'm fearful. That's not speaking in tongues. That's in Scottish. It means Angus, the man is not born yet that I'm scared of. And he meant it. He had blue eyes. And when he looked at you, I was uh, 40 years old. He was 70. And when he said jump, I said, how high, dad? Some of you are laughing because you've got dads just like that. Now, how do you get through to a man like that? He said to me, don't ever speak to me about religion. And don't ever speak to me about politics. That's private business. That's what he told me. Then my mom went to be with Jesus. She died. My mother died first. My dad was broken. He was a one lady man. He, was, he just started dying. We could see he was dying. He went to the hospital. We didn't know what to do. I tried to get hold of some ministers. They wouldn't go to talk to him. I don't blame them. They were scared of him. One morning on the farm in that little mud house, I said to my wife, Jill, and I said to the kids, Granddad is dying. We want him to be saved. I said, I want you to fast and pray. I'm going myself. Those kids went without food that day. I got in my, 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 my pickup and I drove about 30 miles. That's all. It was the longest trip of my life. I was scared. I didn't know what to say. I had all the scriptures there. I know the Bible. John chapter 3 verse 16, 1 John 1, 9. All those scriptures, I had the whole lot, all lined up. I was going to preach the gospel to my father. 
I drove down there, I was crying, I didn't know what to say. I said, God, man, please, before he dies, I want to see my dad in heaven. Do, do you believe, ladies and gentlemen, do you believe that unless a man is born again, he'll never see the kingdom of heaven? Do you believe that? Well, then we need to get cracking because your people are going to hell every day. That's why Tommy said to me, Angus, it's unacceptable. That's why we're here. That's why we've left our country to come here, to tell you to get out there and to make it happen. And that's why you're here tonight and the other people aren't because God's got a mission for you, a mandate for you. You say, I'm not good enough. You are good enough. You say, I've got no education. You have. You've got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. How much more do you need? How much more do you need? When are you ever going to be qualified? These boys are qualified. They haven't stopped for three years. That's why you're here tonight. This is huge. Daryl, Steve, I never believed that you get a crowd like this, man. That's the honest truth. I'm talking about, I thought about 100 people or something. And I would have been so happy. You got, you, got, you, got a, you got an army here, man. And we're coming back, Daryl. We're coming back and it's going to be full the next time. Full. Full outside. And then when we finish here, we get in our motor cars and we're going to Dallas, Texas. We're going to the Cowboy Stadium. It's going to be full. Full. 111,000. It's a bit small, but we'll, we'll do our best. We'll push them in. How big is your vision? If your vision doesn't scare you, it's not big enough, I tell you. Are you scared, boy? you petrified. That's why you're pulling your beard out. I'm nearly finished. I want to get nice and close to you. And this is not a joke. It's the biggest thing in my life. So I drove down to the city. I parked my pickup. I started walking up the steps. I didn't know what to say. But I knew I had to go. There's some of you here tonight. You've got to go home. You've got to make peace with your loved one. You've got to. You say, Angus, I don't know how to. You've got to. My wife doesn't want to talk to me, Angus. She wants a divorce. Get on your knees, boy, and ask for forgiveness. It's not my fault, Angus. I don't care whose fault it is. The devil is hell-bent, hell-bent in destroying the family. Revival is coming through the family. It's not coming through the White House. It's coming through the family. Now, if you can't make peace in your own home, you don't deserve to speak to anybody out there, do you? What kind of ambassador are you? Oh, well, I'm going to Africa, brother. You stay here and get your own house in order before you come to Africa. So I walked up those steps. Came to the ward. As I was walking up the steps, I said, Jesus, when I walk into that ward, this is a very private matter. Please, Lord, do a miracle. I don't want anybody in that ward, just me and dad, because this is going to be hard enough anyway. As I walked into the ward, it was packed with people. I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> See, God, sometimes, he says, no, my boy, not on your conditions. Well, you know something, I walked up, madam, my dad was a very handsome man. He had thick, thick hair, brushed back. He was clean shaven. He's an ex-World War II veteran, my father. He spent three and a half years in a prisoner war camp. He was sitting there with his arms folded. He was in a chair, uh, in, a, in a bed with a pillow behind him. I'll never forget it. He was waiting for me. As I walked in, you know something? I'm telling you, man, everything fell apart. Bro. I didn't use the Bible. I walked up to that old Scotsman. I'd never, ever hugged him in my life. We're from the old school. The closest I could get to my father was a handshake. Now I hug my boys, man. I love them. I hug everybody. I love you boys. I'm not shaking no more hands, man. I've got time to shake hands. I'm too busy hugging men. I just put my Bible down. I walked up to that old Scotsman. I said, Dad. He looked at me. He said, Hi, laddie. I said, Dad, man, I love you, man. And I just put my arms around him and I started to cry. I said, Dad, do you know you're dying? He says, Hi, laddie, I can don't ever tell a man who's dying that he's not dying. He knows he's dying. I said, Dad, do you ever want to see Mom again? Said, of course I do. I said, well, you won't see her if you don't repent and give your life to Jesus. 
Would you like to do it now, Dad? The whole ward was watching. Everybody, the nurses, everybody. Would you like to do it now, Dad? He says, I let him. I led my father to Christ. He prayed that beautiful prayer. Right there. Right there. Dear Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sin. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I will serve no other gods but you. I thank you for dying for me a sinner on the cross of Calvary. From tonight onwards, I'll serve you alone. Amen. You know, you know when we finished, there's a nurse came running across. She said, Mr. Buck, and welcome to the family of God. The people were clapping. I thought I saw, I heard the hallelujah choir singing in the background. Heaven broke loose. Three weeks later, my dad went to be with Jesus. He was at peace and I'm waiting for him. Man, I can't wait to see that old Scotsman. He'll be waiting there with my little nephew, the one who fell off the tractor. He'll be there. Auntie Angus, when are you coming? If you get to heaven before me and he asks you where I am, tell him I'm coming. I'm just busy doing a bit of work, but I'm coming. Because I'm a sojourner. This is not my home. I'm passing through. I'm an ambassador for Jesus. When my work is done, I'm going home. I'm going home. going home what about you if God calls you home tonight are you ready sir you know what's going to happen when God calls you home sir this is how I understand it please correct me Alan if I'm wrong when we stand before the Lord our heavenly father will be the judge the devil will be the prosecutor and Jesus Christ will be the defense attorney and when I walk in there and I stand there Father's going to look at me. He's not going to ask me how many campaigns I preached at, how many people prayed the sinner's prayer, how, how many orphanages, no, no, how many poor, no, no. He's going to ask one question. He's going to look at his son and he's going to ask Jesus, do you know this man? And if Jesus says, I know him, Father, he's going to say, let him in. It's as simple as that. If Jesus says, I don't know him, and I say, but I've been a preacher, I've been all over the world. He says, I don't know him. Tell the devil, take him away. That's how simple my theology is. Is that right? Am I, is that accurate or not? He says it's okay. I want to ask you a question tonight. If you, if you die tonight, if you die tonight, matter, are you confident that Jesus will recognize you? And I'll tell you the only way you're going to be confident. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ, and you believe in your heart, that he's been raised from the dead. You shall be saved. Come on, let's give him a clap. You shall be saved. You shall be saved. One of the major denominations in our country, two weeks ago, there's over a million followers. The Synod met all the Theologians, and they decided that it is okay for homosexual preachers to preach in their churches. And they produced a 15 page document, and they mentioned Jesus three times in the whole 15 pages. Shocking! I don't hate homosexuals, I love homosexuals, I love lesbians. But I cannot condone their lifestyle. That's all. And I want to tell them that God can set you free. God can restore you. God can use you. I've done it many times. We don't rewrite this book to suit our lifestyle. You take one word out of this book and it is no longer, it has no power in your life. Now I want to finish because I want to make an altar call in a minute. In a minute. I really do. I'm challenging all of you. Every single one of you in this place. You cannot leave this place tonight undecided. If you're ashamed of the gospel, there will be no power in your life. I'm telling you now, God will be ashamed of you in heaven. You know why I love him so much? You know why I love him so much? Because God says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, Alan, I have to tell them this. It's the biggest thing in my life, my brother. 
Two years ago, a publishing house came to me. They know how much I love the Bible. Have you ever seen a photograph of me without my Bible, sir? Take that book with you everywhere you go, my boy, from tonight on. It's everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. And they said to me, we're going to do a devotional Bible for you, Angus. I said, I don't believe it. I'm supposed to be the man of faith. I've got a standard eight education. What's that? That's about like, yeah, like that. You probably got the same one. You look like me. You're a clever man. They've done me a Bible. It's the greatest thing in my life. It's the Mount Everest in my life. It's the cherry on the top. It's the creme de la creme. Doesn't get bigger to be a social. Now, I want to say this to you, Mike. He's from England. And I mean this with my heart. I'm not being disrespectful. If Queen Elizabeth from Great Britain wrote me a letter and said, we are honoring you with a knighthood, it wouldn't mean the same as this. To be associated with God. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot afford to compromise the gospel. Because I'm associated with this book. I have a Bible. Angus, where can we get it? You can get it on Amazon.com. And that's not advertising. That's telling you the truth. Folks, I've written 30 books. They mean nothing to me. This is the one. Philip. I really mean it. I love you so much, son. You have no idea how much I love you. This is the biggest thing in my life. God has given me my heart. Says, Madam, I don't need anything else. This is it. I've, I've, I'm there. I'm ready to go home anytime. Now, God can do the same for you tonight. He can do exactly the same for you. What is, what is your vision? What is your heart's desire? I don't care what it is. I want to be a farmer. I want to get married. I want to be healed. I want to get rid of this depression. I want to get rid of this inferiority complex. I want to start living with purpose. I want to be able to get up in the morning like Daryl and Steve and say, God, what have you got for me today? What do I do? You repent tonight. You say, Jesus, tonight I'm starting all over again. You see, some of you say, well, brother, I've known the Lord since 1965. I could care less, man. Some of these young people weren't even born in 1965. Why are you talking about 1965? You should be talking about what happened this morning in your life. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap. I want to ask the music team to come up quickly. I don't want you to leave this place. I don't want you to leave this place. Because I really believe the Holy Spirit wants to do something in your life right now. I really mean it with all my heart. I don't care what denomination you belong to. I can't spell that word either. I don't care what church you go to. I don't care if you don't even go to church. But tonight's your night. And it's in the rodeo. And it's in the bull ring. And it's with Jesus. And tonight we're going to take the devil once and for all and put him underneath your heel. Right there. And he's going to stay there. And then you're going to move on. You know what I love about Jesus? He's got a bad memory. Do you know that? Do you know that my Jesus has got a bad memory? When he forgives, he forgets. So tomorrow morning when you wake up and you say, Lord, remember? He says, I don't remember nothing. If any man be in Christ. Oh, I love that scripture. He's a new creation. You guys sing so beautifully. I want to tell you that tonight you touch my heart. And the thunder came down and the rain came down. I just added to your singing. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Ambassadors for Jesus Christ. You see, you're singing for the Lord. I'm preaching for the Lord. Some people are working for the Lord. Some people are making money. Alan is one of the best teachers I've ever met in my life. That's a fact. Teacher, preacher. So is his brother. These boys have got a church that you need to go and see. We don't have a church in South Africa like this church. Why are they here tonight? Both of them. Because they've got a heart for the lost. And tomorrow we're going somewhere else. And then we're going to, to Bridgestone Arena. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you're going to be there. Because I've come here tonight. I'm hoping you're going to be there. Is it sold out? We'll make room for you. You just tell us where you come from. We'll make room for the people from Fort Smith. Is that right, Fort Smith? 
You come in. Alan's looking worried. He says, in this country, we've got rules. Well, we're going to break them this time for Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Doesn't sound right, eh? We're going to break them, eh? He's pulling his beard right out now. He's worried because the police are going to get him. And I'm going home. Folks, I want to tell you, I love you so much. I want to tell you, the gospel is exactly that simple. There's nothing complicated about the gospel. We complicate it. Educators complicate. Communicators simplify. I've got little grandsons like this. I've got six all the same age. They all understand the parables in the Bible. Every one of them. People used to say to me, your gospel, your preaching is so simple. I used to take it as an insult. I take it as a compliment now. You must be born again. So what we're going to do, this is what we're going to do. Okay? We're all going to stand up. All of us. Every single one of you. Those of you that can't stand up, you're going to stay there. We're still going to pray for you. I want you to sing something, a worship song. Whatever God tells you. And while they start singing, I want you to come to the front. I want you to come to the front tonight because the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. There are some of you that have been resisting for years and stopping tonight. Tonight you come into the, uh, but Angus, they're going to watch me. I'm a pastor. I couldn't care whether you're a pastor. You know that you need more of God. Right? You want to see revival, you better get in the front, front line. Because the thing that holds back a lot of people is pride. You say, if I come up there, what about my flock? I'll tell you about your flock. They'll follow you. And if you don't come to the front, they come in anyway. And if you stay there, you've got not much chance on Sunday morning. Angus, are you, are you, are you blackmailing us? No, I'm telling you the truth. We need to make a decision for Jesus. And we need to do it in the bull ring. This is your place. This is where Jesus would be preaching. On the hillsides. He was chucked out of the synagogue, remember? Paul was chucked out of the synagogue, remember? Why? Because he said you must be born again. Are you ready, girls and boys? I'm going to come down here. He said, okay, where's the sound man? Can I come down here? Okay, well, I'm coming down anyway. I'm coming down here. And you're going to start coming forward. And we've got lots of room here. Plenty of room. We'll move these chairs. And then I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray two prayers. The first one is the prayer of repentance. And the second one is the prayer of healing. I'm going to pray for healing. One prayer. And then you're going to go home. And you're going to see what God's going to do in your life. You will never, ever be the same again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Can you start playing? And can you start coming forward, please? And I want you to come and stand right up here with me. Come on. Come on. Don't hang back. There's nothing to think about. Come up to the front. Right to the front here. Right up against the front, please. Thank you. Come on. Don't look at the person sitting next to you. Granny, come on. God wants to use you, madam. You better get up here. What are you waiting for? You should be running to the front. Running to the front. Revival for America. America will be saved. America is being saved. Starting in your life tonight, sir. That's right, you, sir. Yes. Yes. People are going to know who you are from tonight onwards. The devil's going to know who you are. He's over there. He's a coward. He's left. He's on his way out. The devil only attacks the weak. He only attacks compromises. He doesn't touch people who've got a heart. Come around this side, please. Come around this side. Come around this side. Around this side. Can you come around this side? Can we have some help here, please? We want to move these people around this side. People are coming forward here. Don't leave this place tonight. Come around that way. Right the way around. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Tonight, your night. Tonight. Tonight. Healing. Healing. In Jesus' name. Freedom. Freedom, sir. Freedom. Come up to the front. Right up to the front. Come around here. 
I'm a Christian. Well, why don't you make a recommitment? You don't have to. That's the devil talking to you. You do have to. There are areas in your life that tonight you need to believe at the foot of the cross. So what are we going to do? We're going to sing again. I want you to come to the front around here. I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you. Because I don't know when you'll get a chance again. And maybe never. And you might never see me again. Because I might be going home sooner than you think and I'm ready for it. All right, so we're nailing our colors to the mast tonight, sir. As for me and my house, we serve God. That's all. all right. Okay, so come out. Come on. I'm going to wait for you. I'm waiting for you. Come around here. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. We love you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. We love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. issues in our lives it's time to pray I want to say to you young man God's got his hand on your life you yeah. and God says to you tonight the greatest sin in this book is the sin of unbelief when you limit Jesus you say Lord you can't do that that's too big that's the only time that God ever Jesus ever got angry in the Bible See, he said you wicked Generation, How much longer must I persevere with you? Bring the boy to me and he cast the demon out. You want power in your life. You've got to believe. Without faith, you cannot believe. You cannot. You, you, you cannot. Without faith, you cannot please God. And he who believes must believe that he is. Why am I holding this book? Because the faith comes from the book. See? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing. Hear him by the word. See? See, when I was in the stadium and we were in a drought, maybe I have to do it when I go home again. I don't know. They said to me, El Nino is coming. 
Don't plant your good lands. I got on the platform because there was peasant farmers in Africa who've got small farms. I said, don't plant them. It's not going to rain. I said, to hell with El Nino. I'm going back. I'm going to plant every field and I'm going to release my next door neighbor's farm as well. And I planted potatoes. And I had no irrigation. And I had a bumper crop. Not because I'm a good farmer. But because God honors the prayer of faith. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap. Come on. Prayer of faith. He honors the prayer of faith. He, 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 he doesn't honor prayer. God doesn't honor prayer. I'm telling you. God does not honor prayer. God honors the prayer of faith. It's the prayer of faith that sets the captives free. James chapter 5 verse 16. Sir, I might not be very clever, but I know this book. And I know the author of this book. Job 28, 28. The fear of God, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil, that's understanding. I know some very clever theologians. They think they're clever. They know the book, but they don't believe it. That's why they got no power. Power comes when you pray the prayer of faith. Okay, so now we're gonna now we're gonna pray. Can we just stop the piano for a minute, my girl? Hey, you're a beautiful pianist. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. This is a wonderful night. This is fantastic. This is. I love this country. I love this. You people. You people brought Christianity to Africa. Some of the greatest preachers I've ever heard of in my life. Men that have influenced me. Charles Finney. D.L. Moody. These men have influenced my life. A.W. Tozer. I'm reading another one of his books right at this time. The devil was petrified of these men. We need some A.W. Tozers here tonight. We need some Dwight Lyman Moody's here tonight. We need some Charles Finney's here tonight. That's what we need. We need some more Billy Graham's here tonight. So we're going to pray. And God's going to set you free. How's it going to happen, Angus? You're going to confess your sins. And He's going to forgive you. And you're going to walk out this place. Healed, cleansed, and free. I feel free just talking to you. I feel free. I feel free. You see, you see, madam, you think that I you 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 think I'm never tempted by the devil? Madam, the war is in the mind. It's not in the heart. When I lie in my bed, my wife is on the farm by herself, that young lassie. We've got a lot of murder in our country. Our farmers are getting murdered. The devil comes to me in the wee hours of the morning. He says, big shot. You think you're a big shot. You go to America to preach the gospel. Look out for your wife. One man came to me once and he said, you are the most irresponsible person I've ever met. You leave your wife on the farm by, your, by herself. I said, sir, my God is more able to look after my wife than I am. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added. My wife is more safe with me here than if I was on the farm disobeying God. You see, obedience, oh hallelujah, is better than sacrifice. That's my boy. That's my boy. I see some people here are serious here tonight. I see some fire in your eyes. You are sick and tired of the devil robbing you. He's rubbing you with, with fear. Okay, we're gonna. Are you ready to pray? Are you guys up there? Are you with us? Put your hand up if you're with us. The guys up top there. Are you? Are you with us? Uh, I don't know why you're not down here, but maybe you can't walk or something. I'll pray for you as well. I'm not being disrespectful. I love you, but we've really got to stand up, man, and be counted. Okay, we're ready to pray that prayer. I, I just feel that you boys need to be up here. You need to bring your team up here.
Bring them up quickly. Alan, where are you? Alan, Alan Jackson. That baby, I don't know where that baby is. I would love to hold that baby in my arms, the one that's crying. I was in Dublin, that's in Ireland. Two years ago, exactly like this, the mother was standing here with a baby, a little baby. The baby was screaming, just like that baby. The Holy Spirit said to me, bend down and pick the baby up. Yeah, you, don't, you don't pick up other people's babies. I picked her up, I held her here, she went dead quiet. I got a bottle of water and I gave her a drink and she never made another sound. That made more impact on those people than all my preaching. Where's that baby? Bring that baby here. One of two things will happen. I'll either give her some water or I'll give her a hiding, but she will be quiet. I'm over here, sweetheart. Can you bring her up here? I've got some cold drink for her. Bring her, bring her back. She doesn't want to bring her up here. Come on, mother. She's spoiling, the, she's spoiling your evening. What's wrong, sweetheart? Is she not well? Bring her up here. Come on. Come up and stand with me. Come up here. Come up here, my darling. Would you, you, want, some, you want some cold drink? Hey? Come. Come with Uncle Angus. Come on. There we go. I told you, man. That's no, okay, my sweetheart. Don't worry. We're here for the babies. There we are. There we are. Would you, would you like a bit of lemonade? Would you like some lemonade? Would you like a little drink? There we are. Have a drink. No? Would you like some? You take it, mother. Give it to her. <laughs> okay, you stay right there now. We're going to pray the sinner's prayer. What's her name? Her name is Alice. Alice, look over here. All these people are watching you, Alice. They love you. You're so pretty. Can you come? Can I hold you? Huh? Can I hold you? Would you like me to hold you? I love little girls. <laughs> can I, she likes me. Can I hold you? Come on. Come on, hold on. That's a good. Oh, okay, all right. All right. All right. Now, if she was Irish. No, I'm only joking. Okay, folks, listen. This is not a laughing matter. This is very serious. There's a lot of children getting abused in the world because we Christians are not doing our job. But it's changing tonight. I'm not talking about this situation at all. You can see how much this girl loves her, her child. Okay, will you pray this prayer after me, please? I really want you to pray this prayer from your heart. Tonight's confession time. Okay, we ready? You ready, boy? Okay, take your hats off, chaps. Listen, Uncle Angus is going to sing it. Look, listen to me now. I'm going to pray a prayer now. I'm going to pray. You must pray after me, okay? All right? You ready? Okay. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. This evening. This evening. I repent. I repent. Of all my sin. Of all my sin. Especially. Especially. The sin of unbelief. The sin of unbelief. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Tonight. Tonight. I promise. I promise. I will never. Listen to the lies of the devil again. From tonight onwards, I choose to believe what this word says about me. I thank you for dying for me, a sinner on the cross of Calvary. And because you live, I can face tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now let's give the Lord a big clap. Big one. Big clap. A big one. Big one. Big clap. Madam, clap. That's my girl. Another one. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Right. That's enough. Now we're going to pray one prayer. You see, she stopped crying now, Alice. Alice, you're such a beautiful girl, man. Do you know that? You are so pretty. And I like your raincoat. <laughs> it's a nice raincoat. It must be good to, you, good to your mother, see? Right, now we're going to pray for healing. One prayer, that's all. I can't pray for every one of you. We'll never, we'll, we'll never finish up. Pray for healing. Who is sick in their bodies tonight, or their mind, or their soul? Put your hand up. That's it, exactly. The same in Africa. You're sick, okay? Now this is very serious. There are people here. There's a young boy who's got cystic fibrosis. Tonight, it's going. The people here are battling with eyesight. Tonight, God's going to restore your sight. Why? Because he said so. That's why he said so. I don't see anywhere in the Bible where Jesus says, be you sick. He says, be healed. Be healed. There are people here tonight who've got no self-confidence. 
young boys get out there and do it boy get out there and do it they told me you'll never have a farm you'll never have a, we've got three farms that's right some people have been telling lies about you my headmaster told my mother take him out of school he'll never amount to anything I hope I meet my headmaster in heaven one day I'm going to ask him how many books did he write sorry that was a bit nasty but you see that's it sir okay and by the way sir there is no such word in the Bible as retirement no no only promotion come on let's give it another clap that's right I'm not finished I'm only beginning is that right is that right boys there's no such word this is the greatest night of your life man do you understand that look what you've done man you've caused pandemonium the devil is petrified of you petrified give him a clap yeah but I want to thank God for the intercessors the intercessors have been praying for you for months give them a big clap thank you Jesus that's my favorite people if there's no prayer I don't go I don't waste my time and a person invites me I say how's the prayer life going they say well we don't have anybody praying I said cancel me out I'm not coming where there's no prayer there's no power tonight the power of God is in this place can you feel it can you feel it it's tangible it's tangible Alice is not even crying can you see that she's such a good little girl man you are so pretty and so good say thank you my mother's saying thank you anyway okay my boy how big is God he's as big as you allow him to be see how big is God if your vision doesn't scare you it's not big enough step out of the boat man get in the water the boat's sinking anyway All right now we're going to pray for healing one prayer I want you to go home tonight I want you to take your Bible I want you to write this night in your Bible sir this is the night that your life is changed is that right sir the man with the hat okay and the country is going to change because of men like you no more toleration for the devil stand up sir if you have to go to jail go to jail for Jesus man Amen. come on is that right good boy good boy okay you want healing for your bodies your mind you put your hands up both hands keep them up high keep them up high that's it what a sight will you pray this prayer after me dear Lord Jesus I acknowledge tonight that you are my healer you are my deliverer you are my provider you are my vision you are my life I thank you for answered prayer I thank you for healing me I thank you for giving me a new start a new beginning tonight in Jesus name I will never be the same again this is the beginning in Jesus name Amen let's give the Lord a big clap Amen that's it unless there's anything else I want to tell you I love you with the love of God and I want to tell you something else sir if I don't see you here I'll see you there I'll, I'll tell you why because good people don't go to heaven believers go to heaven so I'll see you there Amen Okay, Alice, you can go home now. Over to you. Guys, let's just, let's just worship as we're leaving. You go home, love your families, start what God finished. Continue what God has started tonight. Amen. Amen. Well done, girls. God bless. Well done. Well done, madam. God bless you. Well done, young man. Bless you.